Little Boxes Part 4 and it's a bit of a two-in-one this one in that I built two modules into one box so here is a little box and you can see that I've got what's called a VCV on this side and on this side I've called it an LFO right okay ignore that one because what I'm going to do I'm going to do a part A and a part B and deal with each one at a time so little boxes part 4A will deal with the LFO the low frequency oscillator yep it's another oscillator only this one isn't designed for making a uh, sound in itself what this unit does is modify the sounds that are made by other oscillators that have a control voltage input so when we were building the CV inputs on the other boxes this is one of the things we can feed into it you can see a couple of controls we've got a, a rate control here which is the frequency of the oscillator now being a low frequency oscillator it goes from something around about I think this one does something about 0.5 of Hertz up to about 100 Hertz probably a bit more um, and then this one is it's labeled wave because on this design um, we have uh, a dual wave output that is variable between a square wave and then you can crank it up and it will go more and more towards a uh, triangle wave type output and uh, there's a the usual power on and off switch and a little LED to tell me that I'm now running on batteries and this only has one socket on the top there one output socket uh, because that basically is where the control voltage comes from to modulate wherever we're plugging it into okay this design it uses uh, an operational amplifier uh, otherwise known as an op amp to generate the oscillator I'm not going to go into great detail of about how a, an op amp can be made to oscillate if you want all the science and theory behind it then search op amp oscillator and you will find more examples than you can shake a patch lead at what this video is about is how I put this one together and what it actually does how you can use it to actually well not just make but alter the sounds that you are making from other little boxes so if you've been following this series parts one two and three showed you how to make little boxes that generated noise um, part two didn't have control voltage input but the other two have so what I'm going to do I'm going to show you what's inside the box uh, talk a little bit about what's in there uh, show you how the basic construction goes I don't have a circuit diagram for this one um, but I have got a link to a, a strip board layout which is what I built this from and yeah it worked first time so and it's a fairly as you'll see a fairly simple circuit yet again and pretty inexpensive to build um, yeah so let's have a look at what's inside the box right well that was a brief overview of the box as I say let's ignore that side for now and concentrate on the LFO as pointed out earlier very simple controls you've got the power and off the rate the wave shape and an output so let's have a look at what's in actually inside the box as I say we're going to ignore that side of the box so if we move in a little closer we can drop the camera down a bit Yeah. shot on glorious wobbly cam this video 
Um, as usual with, with my little boxes, um, I power them from a single 9 volt battery. I'll spin this round, we can probably see this a little bit better. That's the circuit. Once again, you can see it is a very simple circuit. In the middle of the, the board there, you've got the operational amplifier which is an NE5532 operational amplifier is readily available fairly cheap and then there's just a, a handful of resistors a couple of capacitors these big guys here the capacitors there's a few resistors on the board and then there's the control pots for the rate and the wave shape there's an on off switch that's Basically, that's that's just a little board that's got the LED on it that just tells you that the power's on, and there's the output socket. So again, very very simple, very few components. What I refer to as cheap and cheerful. So what does this? cheap and cheerful LFO sound like. I did say it's not used for generating sound but if we want to hear what it would sound like just so you can see what a, a low frequency LFO sounds like my uh, little amplified speaker friend again hopefully it's charged up oh yes and Turn the, turn the power on. That's at its lowest rate. So you can hear it's just a series of clicks. So, as an audio source, and it's limited if any use, as a source for modulating other audio sources. You'll see in a in a moment just how useful that can be. So that's that's its maximum rate. Again, it's still pretty low frequency, and that's kind of on a on the square wave end of the signal. And you can hear. The tone has changed because the shape of the wave has changed. Okay, as I say, as a sound source, it's not very useful at all. But what we can do plug it into a sound source that has control voltage input. So I'm going to use the avalanche oscillator that we built in part three of this series. If you've not watched part three then do so because when I do part 4b and look at the other unit in this little box here um, then some of the information on Vactrols in part 3 which are the, the way I get the control voltage on this thing um, is relevant to what we'll be looking at in the other half of the box. I'm going to pass once again I'm going to pass this through from the output from the Avalanche into my guitar amp So, with a bit of luck, let's turn the volume down so I don't blast everything out. So that's the bog standard Avalanche 3, 3 oscillator drone.
So, what we can do, if we take the output from our LFO and plug it into the input on one of the oscillators, you should hear, when I turn it on, the modulation on that particular oscillator. So that, we're at the lowest rate there, and we're on the square wave setting, so that is a square wave from the LFO modulating the avalanche. And you can hear there the different effect it has when you change the wave shape. to the higher frequency oscillator. So now, our simple little three oscillator drone sounds a lot more interesting when you start to inject modulating frequencies into the control voltage inputs, and all done from our very simple, cheap and cheerful LFO. So as you see, it's a fairly simple circuit, few components, inexpensive, there's a, a link in the description to the strip board layout just copy what's on the layout and hey you too can have lots of fun so go on give it a go build you on yourself